Timothy Ash is with me, the senior sovereign strategist for emerging markets at Blue Bay Asset Management. If Vladimir Putin wanted to make life extremely difficult and confusing, chaotic, and so divisions, he has succeeded. Well, yeah, I mean, as you're right, I mean, he wants to make life difficult. He wants to sow division. He doesn't want to stop gas exports. It's a $50 billion a year business. Uh, there are no pipelines east. The pipelines are on west. So if he, if he cuts gas to Europe, he loses that business, right? So, but this is all about, I think, uh, causing difficulties within the European Union, getting some countries that uh, are more dependent on, on, uh, on imports of gas uh, right. from Russia to, to lobby, to lobby for those sanctions to be moderated or eased. Uh, and, that, and that's what it's all about, basically. But then we have this other business that Thierry Breton was talking about, which is more basic and easier to understand, which is the contract says it has to be paid in euros or dollars or whatever foreign currency. Now, since the transaction under Putin's plan converts it into rubles in the buyer's account, which is then paid over, there's a strong argument that says that that is not valid. That, that if you follow that, you haven't paid in ruble, uh, in, in, in the harder currency. Well, I think it's pretty clear it breaks the contract. Um, but I think also what Putin is trying to do is, um, you know, because of sanctions, international business does not want to transact in rubles. Uh, if he can get major... Uh, energy companies force them to transact in rubles. It maybe shows some some uh, some leadership to other companies that it's okay to be transacting in rubles. So he's, he's essentially trying to break sanctions and, as I said, trying to sow so division within the Western alliance. The are we inexorably, in your view, inevitably and inexorably moving towards a scenario of? either Europe sanctioning the oil and gas just to get it over and done with, with the attendant uh, economic problems, or uh, Putin turning off the tap? Well, look, uh, Putin has shown himself to be an unreliable energy supplier to, you, to Europe. So whether it's this year or next year or three years, Europe will inevitably diversify away from Russian energy. It's going to happen uh, because of Putin. And I think Whatever he does in Ukraine, whether there's a peace deal next week, Europe doesn't trust Putin anymore on energy. So, you know, he's, he's kind of cut the golden goose that was laying these golden eggs of energy. Uh, that business is going to be over for Russia. And we heard last night on this programme from Hungary's foreign minister, who was very honest and said, look, we've no choice. We, we have to buy 74 percent of our requirement of gas comes from Russia. Therefore, we have no choice. Now, we can make that same argument that we heard from the Austrian finance minister on this programme last week. Um, they've got a valid point, but how do you square that with the philosophical argument of who hurts most? Well, look, actually, I think we do have a choice. It, it depends how much security matters to us. As European security, what's happening in Ukraine, war crimes. You know, sure, we, we can cut off energy tomorrow if we want to. There'll be a big price to pay. Obviously, there's been various forecasts in Germany in terms of the size of the recession. But, you know, what's going on in Ukraine is really important. This is a huge threat to, to our way of life, our system. And, you know, uh, the problem with sanctions all along is the West has not been able, been willing to bear the cost. This is one of those defining moments. Do we care about security or not? If we do, then unfortunately, you know, we're going to have to call Putin's bluff and impose an energy embargo and cut those dollar, well, those euros and dollar uh, sums that are making their way to Moscow to funding this, uh, this conflict.